Hi, everybody, and welcome. Hey, everyone. <laughs> welcome. Hi. It's Friday, so it must be the Kinetics USA week weekly show, Onwards and Upwards. This is a live show for nurses all over the world who are looking to come to the United States. And we are so excited today. I am joined by Carla. Hi, Carla. Welcome. Hey, Tanya. And also Ruby. Hi, mm -hmm. Ruby. Welcome. Hi, morning. Morning. And today's topic is we're going to be speaking about what it's like to live in North Dakota as a nurse. This is going to be really exciting. We're going to be hearing about the area, where it is exactly on the map. We're going to be hearing exactly where Ruby and uh, Carla live in Bismarck. We're also going to be hearing about what's fun to do in the area, what transportation is like, what is housing like, what is the cost of living like, what is taxes like, what are the schools like. There is so much information. We can't wait to hear from Ruby and Carla about their life in North Dakota. So we're going to get started. Um, and I'm going to welcome everybody from around the world that's watching. Wow, we've got lots of people watching and lots of questions that are coming ruby and carla so get oh ready. my goodness <laughs> we are in for a ride <laughs> i know exciting okay so we've got elvis who's saying hi jennifer elvis is asking about his aisles i'll um talk about that in a little bit of time elvis we've got butyderm who's here butyderm who's from saudi jansen from qatar and Butyderm is already asking about child education in North Dakota. So we're going to have the answers there for you. And um, Mika is asking, watching from Singapore, Arbit from India. Emmanuel is from Ghana. How's the recruitment process? We're going to talk about that, Emmanuel. Um, Ola Bisi from Nigeria. Butyderm is asking about religion. We are Muslim and can we practice our faith and prayer? So there, Carla's going to be on. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> Carla's watching. Lay from Manila. Eldrin from Florida. Oh my, my home country. So um, I was an immigrant myself. I came here 21 years ago. Tess from Kenya. Nash is watching from the UAE. So we are like the United Nations today. And we can't <laughs> wait to hear from Ruby and Carla and hear all about their experiences. Okay. So we're going to start off um, and just ask um, Ruby and Carla just to tell us a little bit about yourself and about your background. Let's start with Ruby. Hi, my name is Ruby. I was like, Carla. <laughs> um, my name is Ruby and I've been here in North Dakota for six years now. So I just recently had my citizenship. And ah, I, congrats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And um, I, I had a background in ICU, um, medical oncology, stroke unit, and recently I shift to dialysis. So... Oh. Okay, so all around, <laughs> all around, lots of experience from Ruby, and congrats on getting your citizenship. What was it like when you got your citizenship, Ruby? Well, finally, I can have the blue passport. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I can tell you, I remember when I got my 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 American citizenship many years ago. It was one of the greatest idea, greatest days of my life. Was it like that for you? <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, like, finally, <laughs> we are here. That's what we want, yeah. <laughs> right? That's why we're here. Absolutely. So that's the goal for everybody who's watching as well from today from all over the world. Carla, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, everyone watching from all over the world. My name is Carla Kabahog. I also hail from the Philippines, of course. Um, and I've been here in Bismarck, North Dakota for about five years now. Um, this this coming April 1st was when I arrived about five years ago. And uh, I have been a registered nurse since 2004 and then back in the Philippines. And then I took my NCLEX 2006 and have been an um, NCLEX RN um, registered nurse since that time. And then I my experience is mostly with pediatrics. So pediatrics all the way. And then when I came here, that's also what I was very thankful for because I got to it. There's not so much here in in North Dakota that has like a children's medical center um, there, compared to other cities and states that they have a huge children's hospital. So I'm still lucky that I was able to continue that path 
And um, I also have long-term care or LTAC. I believe that's what you call it here, an LTAC, um, long-term acute care hospital back in Qatar, where I previously work as well. But it was also with PEDS, so PEDS all the way. <laughs> okay, so very focused on PEDS, and I'm glad yes. you were able to do that in America. Okay, great. And I see we've got a lot of questions that are already coming from the chat. So please, if you're watching anywhere in the world, please feel free to put your questions into the chat. In the next hour, we're going to get through as many questions as we can. We're going to be picking Carla and Ruby's brains. Um, and we are so grateful to them for sharing their experiences and sharing their journey. Um, because for many nurses that are wanting to come to America, it can feel very overwhelming, very scary, very exciting but a little bit of a roller coaster. And the more information that we that we share for, with, with each other, the, the better it is for everybody. So that's why we do the show, Onwards and Upwards. Okay, so let's start talking about North Dakota. Um, and, and actually, before we start talking about, yeah, so mm -hmm. we, we've got a map up of, of North Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's kind of in the middle of the country, to the north of the middle of the country. Um, Carla, did you know anything about North Dakota before you came here? So I had a funny story <laughs> with, with, with how I actually um, ended up here. I had no inkling about North Dakota before I came here. And what was funny was with, at the time when they were, I was with a staffing agency, they told me that um, if you can pick a state, which state are you going to pick to be assigned to? Mm -hmm. Then I kind of told them, I have relatives in North Carolina. Okay. <laughs> and, and then for some reason, when they told me, oh, you have an interview with North, I said, oh, with North, maybe it's North Carolina. So I was so happy. Dakota. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, after I got the interview, I was told um, in a day's time that I landed the job. So that's how I actually um, ended up working here in, in North Dakota. Kind of like a funny story. I was dreaming of going to North Carolina, and then for some reason they scratched the Carolina and dropped me here in, right. <laughs> in North, Dakota. Okay, North Dakota. And now five years later, you still exactly in everything works in, in, in various ways. And um, Ruby, did you know much about North Dakota before you got there? Nobody knows about North Dakota, not my friends. That's why we do this show, Ruby. <laughs> yeah, so they just like, hey, you will be, you know, in North Dakota and stuff. And then I told my friend, they're like, where is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I have my friends in Texas, California, New York, but they're like, oh, I'm like, Let's check in the map. So we have no idea. So we're thinking like North Dakota, <laughs> wild, wild west. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like, you know. Yeah. yeah and, and for many international nurses, they do, you're 100% right. They will know the names of Texas, California, Ooh. Florida, New York. But North Dakota is not one of the more commonly known <laughs> Uh, name so yeah so that's again why we're doing the show because we want to make sure that everybody knows what North Dakota is all, all about and um, so we have a graphic which is a really um surprising graphic for some people and for some people they might not be surprised but it's that North Dakota is known as the happiest state in America I'm not sure if everybody knew that I don't even know if Carla and Ruby knew that <laughs> <laughs> that, that North Dakota is actually the happiest state in America. And this is um, according to new data that was released this year. So can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to live in North Dakota? We're going to talk about Bismarck in a few minutes. But just as a state, um, let's talk a little bit about North Dakota and what it's like living in the state. Carla. So when I first moved here, um, I was a little bit really taken aback with how it's it has a very homey touch feely to it. And I was surprised because, you know, being in, in the United States, I thought that it's it's all about the hustle bustle everywhere. And especially when I moved here, Bismarck, um, for everyone's FYI, is the capital of North Dakota. But when you arrive in the airport, you'll be much surprised that Okay, so it's not really that a lot a lot of people are crowded where we're compared to other states are, especially if you land in um, in California in one of the airports there, in any of the airports there, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's hugely um, crowded. So that's the thing that 
probably um, prompted us to really stay here. It has because it has a homey feel. Like I feel like I'm in the suburbs for some for some reason. And even if I'm in the capital city, it, it's like it's the best of both worlds for me. Because I'm in the capital city, I have access to almost anything and everything. But as well, um, I can get to any place um, like in, in the city, city wise, um, in five to 15, 20 minutes tops. And traffic is only during um, peak peak hours. So so yeah, um, it, it was it was really fun and surprising to find that um, we're actually living here for already five years. <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> you never thought that would happen. You thought you'd be yes, in North, exactly. North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ruby, <clears throat> what was surprising for you when you came to live in North Dakota? Well, first, um, it's just like um, I didn't expect anything because it's like surprise me. So <laughs> yeah, I was surprised arriving mm -hmm. at the airport. Mm -hmm. We pick at the you know like outside. It's like all brown because we arrived mm -hmm. here March 2016. So it's still winter. Oh. So we're like it's all brown and <laughs> not much of a building or anything. But mm -hmm. I'm like oh, okay, never mind. And first, I would I would like go get a card. Like in Manila or in the Philippines, it's free. But here, you need to pay. Like, <laughs> it's not free. I'm trying to get out that card. Like, <laughs> funny. and then yeah, somebody told me, oh, you need to, you know, pay. Uh, oh, okay. Never, Never mind. mind. <laughs> yeah, but what's the you, good? You thing? learn. You learn quickly. Yeah. <laughs> but what's the good thing also about here? Like, uh, surprise! It's very laid back. Mm -hmm. no traffic like what we're used to for them the traffic here it's like eh, this is not traffic <laughs> <laughs> what traffic yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's very easy um to go around mm -hmm. you know like 15 minutes before uh seven o'clock like if you work at seven it's fine because there's no traffic yeah. exactly mm -hmm. yeah. that's the good thing like for me you know Mm -hmm. yeah. People are very friendly. Oh, yes. Yeah. And and the, and that's what you said. It's like that that like feels like home. Like people are friendly. It's an mm -hmm. easy life. Um, it's not so congested. It's not so yes. overcrowded. Um, but no. it's still a city. So yes. I, I think mm -hmm. that the, the population of Bismarck is is just under eight hundred thousand. So it's not like it's a tiny place. Oh wow! Didn't even know that it was yeah. that much. Now <laughs> it doesn't yeah. feel like that much. Exactly. But, <laughs> and it's also very clean. Surprisingly, dur during summer mm -hmm. or spring, it's all greens and very clean. Oh. And yeah, winter, all white. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about winter in a minute. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about Bismarck and where that is on the, the map. Um, because um, it's kind of like almost in the middle of, yes. of North Dakota. Um, tell us about that. So let's leave that map up for a moment and just tell us about the other cities surrounding Bismarck and, and what, what is around there as well. Carla. So um, Bismarck is actually part of the West Central West Central region. So um, and as you can see on the map, it's like the center of the state of North Dakota. And what I have been told is that's what happened. That's what they usually um, use as the capital of every state is um, the, the city that is um, in the most center part. That is usually the capital of the state. I don't know if it's the same for the other states, but that's what I have been told <laughs> by by other people uh, who have been here for a long time. And the surrounding cities, um, I think when you get to Jamestown, it's just about an hour and a half drive or even less, just kind of depends on the speed if you're following the speed limit. And then Fargo is just like uh, three hours or two and a half hours drive away. And then going to Dickinson is southwest. So Dickinson is southwest. So mm -hmm. I think it's all. it also just takes about, uh, about an hour and a half to the southwest. Minot is north central. Um, going out there, it takes about another an hour and a half drive. Um, and then surprisingly, from Bismarck to the border of Canada, it only takes about six hours. Oh, wow. So, very, yep. very close to Canada. 
that's uh that's another interesting fact but when you're in fargo it yeah. only takes you three hours so half the time of uh, compared to when you're in bismarck so when you're in fargo it's like you're just a stone away from being in um manitoba in, in canada so um minot and linton would be uh not sure if it's south central yeah, I, I believe. Yeah. And Williston is one of the cities, too, um, that's quite known, as well as Minot, Dickinson, Jamestown, Fargo and um, Botino as well. Botino is actually near the Canada border, Canadian border. OK. OK. So that gives us a really good idea of the area. The one thing that we notice on that map, um, Ruby, is that there are lots of rivers and there's also the... Um, the, the national park, the um, the, uh, uh, the theater, yes, the, was it, the uh, theater national, Roosevelt park. national park. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, okay. Let me first start. Like um, Bismarck, we are like uh, like where I live. It's just within the city, like eleven minutes to the airport, um, ten minutes to both hospitals. So they're very near. And then also um, like Medora. So in Medora, we have the Roosevelt National Park. So as Carla mentioned, it's like just more than roughly two hours. And it is like a small town um, for vacation destination. So national, uh, they have uh, National Roosevelt is uh, like you can find in North Dakota. So it has like north side, south side. So I went to south side and north side and it's beautiful. So it's like. Badlands. You have badlands inside the um, Roosevelt National Parks. There are some prairie dogs, some bison. So, yeah, if you like uh, those national parks, it's really good to, you know, get in touch with nature. Okay, fabulous. Well, that gives us yes. a lot of information. Okay, so we're gonna. Um, we've got some questions in the chat um, and some comments in the chat. So. Um, Noma is saying, hi, I'm hired at, at Sanford Fargo, waiting for my case to be filed, recently passed my IELTS. Big thanks to Swish and Kinetics for the free review. You are welcome, Noma. So um, just to share with everybody, mm -hmm. Kinetics have a free free um, IELTS review course. Um, this is for all nurses that are, that are uh, placed through Kinetics employers. Um, and um, we are getting fantastic results. From this so um if you have not yet passed your IELTS this is our gift to nurses we actually implemented this because of the pandemic it's our way mm -hmm. of paying it forward for nurses um uh, Noma is asking about Fargo Carla how is Fargo different from Bismarck oh Fargo is the hustle and bustle city <laughs> okay <laughs> so Fargo is the the state I mean the city that's nearest to Minnesota which is the next our neighboring state mm -hmm. so you can get if you're in Fargo, you can get to um, Minneapolis in like three and a half hours time. Also, just kind of depends on um, the road and your uh, speed, speed driving. Mm -hmm. So uh, Fargo, every Fargo is really diverse compared to to Bismarck. Uh, we're actually thinking of moving to Fargo, but um, in the near future. Mm -hmm. So yeah and fargo is really a, a busy very busy city and hectic but um i i actually prefer to be in fargo and sanford in fargo they have like two medical centers there so the sanford fargo medical center and then the sanford broadway medical center and then a lot of um, satellite clinics and smaller urgent care so everything is in fargo so um Sometimes patients would be airlifted from Sanford Bismarck to Fargo because that's where um, I, I think Sanford, Far Sanford Fargo hospitals, mm -hmm. they have, I think they're level, level mm -hmm. one um, when it comes to um, the trauma. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, the trauma center, I think um, it's, in, it's in Sanford Fargo. But Fargo definitely is a very nice city to live in. Mm -hmm. um, I know that a lot of people are asking, you know, crime rate. Well, crime is everywhere, but compared to other cities, um, it's much less happening here um, in, in North Dakota. I mean, anywhere in North Dakota. Yeah, I, I think I saw and we've actually got a slide on that, that uh, North Dakota is the 18th safest city, a state in the, in the country. Oh, yeah. 
Carla, did oh, you have something? <laughs> yes. <laughs> just in addition to Carla. Yeah, just in addition to what Carla said regarding Fargo. So um Bismarck to Fargo, we're like around um three hours. Mm -hmm. Three hours. And in Fargo, yeah, it's quite a like a bigger city than Bismarck. You have mm -hmm. varieties of uh, restaurants there. Um, USCIS can be found in Fargo. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I had my citizenship in, uh, oh, taking in Fargo. Oh. And then, um, yeah, it's nearby um, Minneapolis. And if we want, like, you know, long drive going to Chicago, we pass by Fargo. Yeah. So that's it. And okay. they have malls. They have Macy's there. Oh, fun. <laughs> we don't right. have so here yet. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. So it's it's very interesting for any international nurses that there's you know because sometimes people don't realize that within a state that the cities can be different. So Bismarck sounds like it's very different to Fargo. So that's very interesting also to learn about. Thank you for sharing that. Um. Okay. So let's see some of the questions. Um. We had a question here about the IELTS, so I just wanted to go back to that one real quick. And um, please, what is the IELTS score for me to score? Um, with you, my recent IELTS score. Um, okay, so so the, the the score required, Elvis, is a seven in speaking and a six point five overall. So that is the score that's required by the CGFNS in order to get your visa screen certificate, and you can combine scores. From different tests as long as they were taken within a two-year period and um, Emmanuel is asking hi, hi I'm a nurse from Ghana please how is your recruitment process mm -hmm. so Emmanuel I would encourage you to look at the Kinetics USA website and check out our success path on the success path graphic um, and we might have a graphic we can show you right now and um, it basically tells you all the different steps that you need to take in order to get to the United States so the first is your NCLEX and the second is preparing for your interview. The third is the visa framework. That is, if you're coming on a TN visa, if you're a Canadian or Mexican citizen, or if you're coming on a green card. The fourth is your licensing and credentialing. Fifth is your get ready game plan. Six is your arrival se sequence. And seven is where you are like Carla and Ruby and you can enjoy and prosper. So, Emmanuel, those are the different steps of the success path because it can feel very confusing. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the weather. Um, you know, North Dakota is known to have four seasons. It's known to have um, a climate where you're going to have snow, where you're going to have a white Christmas. And um, how have you adapted to the weather, Ruby? Okay, after six years, or even <laughs> before. <laughs> I, for me, I think it's fine, but um, sometimes you get tired of it after six yeah. years, I guess. But my, I remembered my very first year. Oh, you're so excited! I am so excited. Like um, December 25, 26, blizzard, and I'm like, you hoo! And they're like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm so excited because this is a new experience, experience. for me. Yeah. Yes, I worked in Middle East, so I experienced a sandstorm. And now here is snowstorm. So I really drove. I, I, I bought a new phone just to take a video of the, you know, <laughs> my driving. <laughs> but it was fun to experience. And since I have a good car, so it's really okay. So investment for um in a good car, all-wheel drive. And then another thing, my friends, like, it's so cold there. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, well, you're not going outside naked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah you just true. You, you're always just bundled right? up. Yeah. You just need to bundle up. And what's so um uh one uh what's the one thing I really learned every day or a day before uh before you need to check the weather, watch the news, mm -hmm. check the weather so you know what to expect and like um to allow time also to go to a certain destinations because um it might be uh, snowy, slicky, mm -hmm. or if it's okay. So, you know, and also how to dress or what to wear. Layering up, if it's chilly, sometimes it's snowing, but it's not too cold. Sometimes there is no snow. You look out the window, it's so friendly, but it's so chilly, like mm -hmm. negative 20, negative, I think, 50. What year was that? Mm -hmm. So it's more on 
um just bundle up just dress up otherwise if it's summer also it's very hot <laughs> and windy <laughs> so like me i like to 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 wear dresses uh, it's really like you know if it's windy <laughs> you cannot wear dresses you'll be holding up and yeah okay so so it sounds like your first christmas was very exciting but over the years you've kind of adapted and got used to the weather yes and um here's the thing it is not all the same like when they ask you how's the weather there i really cannot tell you guys because 2016 is really like after long years that's the first time again they experienced such a blizzard yeah then, i was told that too it was uh yes. one of the worst blizzards back in 2016. it's oh. really like welcoming us you know <laughs> <laughs> and then a year after that it's just okay and then a year after, i mean two years after it's not so bad you know sometimes it's just i don't know what year was it it's just cold not so much snow so it's really different it can be different oh yeah and and carla and um, what about for you because you it, you know you're saying you you've been there also for a few years but it looks mm -hmm. like even if you were to move to fargo you're still going to stay in north dakota so <laughs> how you adapted to the the weather so the weather for me here it, it's like what at ruby said it's really unpredictable like even on a day-to-day -day basis like let's say yesterday it was like negative 10 or um negative 20 and then the next day it will be positive so it's that crazy um that it gets warmer and then suddenly so cold the next day so it's very un unpredictable and right i think today it was snowing again for um a few minutes but um this last i i think this last holidays uh 25th 26th 27th i think we accumulated about uh, maybe 12 inches between 12 to 24 inches of snow for those three days but the thing here is uh there are emergency snow roads that the government um make sure that it gets plowed right away so that um all all the vehicles can use that road and then um get get to their destinations or get home so even if they close like the i-94 um express in a day the next day it's fully functional unlike when what happened with texas they they it only snowed for like a day and roads were closed yeah, yeah um electricity was out so i think um in my five years here i only experienced uh an outage of electricity for about two hours tops oh. and that was it yeah and that was way back when i was in the apartment i think somebody tripped the lines or something like that mm -hmm. yeah but it heavily snowed the night before and then that's what happened um just two hours and then the power was back up so the government is really um ready the people are also ready and then when it's spring summer you can already see people wearing dressing down here they're already wearing, wearing tank tops um shorts and then when these people go to um other states while it's snow it's still snowing there and then we they are being seen you know just wearing um tank tops or um sleeveless there's like are you from north dakota oh yeah because <laughs> <laughs> your body <laughs> compared to north dakota weather i have a friend tell me North Dakota is like a continent of itself. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. But it, but it sounds like you you adapt, right? Oh yeah, yep. Yes. Uh, it was very easy to adapt. Um, it kind of scared me one time when I was driving and um, the the vehicle of the the tire the tires in my vehicle actually skidded. So actually, because when I stepped on the brake and then kind of like turned right away. So that's one of the causes for skidding. So just be very careful. Um, and I, we suggest that you buy a vehicle that's all wheel drive. Even if you don't have a four wheel drive, at least it's an all wheel drive vehicle. Yeah. And just be very careful because once ice sticks to the road, that's when it really starts to get very slidey and slick and okay. will cause accidents. Yeah. Did you yes. have something to add, Ruby? Yes. Um, just in addition to what Carla said, like the government here are really amazing, you know, when it comes to if it's snowing, they clean it right after. Like uh, mm -hmm. when the snow stop, they will clean it. Then so the roads are all passable and then they will pour some sand or whatever. Oh. So that 
yeah so, yeah yeah so it it's not that you you will be afraid like to drive like it's sleeky but they are so uh, like onto it another thing like 2016 if it's like um yeah the blizzard thing so the hospital will send somebody to pick you up yeah that is also the time like i heard some doctors uh what they drove their snowmobile or ski going to work yeah so, yeah it was you know but for me i tried to really drive mm -hmm. but otherwise <laughs> the hospital can pick you up mm -hmm. oh wow yeah never experienced that <laughs> yeah because getting picked up <laughs> yeah and then some nurses also stay in the hospital you know if it's they cannot go home yeah but they will pick up uh staff uh they they um i i did that once they picked me up and then another thing, like for me, mm -hmm. I practice like in front of our apartment, there's a huge uh, parking lot. So I practice driving like when it's winter, like snow. I tried like just to ha get the hang of it, you know, like how to brake, how to turn. So yeah, after that, I got used to it. And so far, so good. Okay, good. <laughs> so that, those are really good tips, though, because those are things that an international nurse, especially when you come from a warm climate, you've never experienced before. So it, yes. it those are really good tips about the driving and getting a good car, invest in a good car. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, it seems like, you know, I mean, you, you guys are there five and six years later. Yeah, who knew? Loving it. So, um, you know, there's a lot to embrace. In fact, there's a, a, a short video that we've got of um, North Dakota that we're going to just show now that just talks a, a little bit about how wonderful the snow can be and the, and the winter and all the activities that you might experience. So we're gonna In North Dakota, winter can renew your spirit. Familiar vistas take on a brand new life. It's a season of opportunity to safely explore, to discover something new, get fired up, and put your inhibitions on ice. So bundle up, be energized, be adventurous, be legendary. I mean, many people love the snow because it, it just gives you opportunity to do so many activities that are new and exciting for international nurses. Maybe oh, yeah. <laughs> um, especially when it froze. Uh -huh. It's so pretty. Like, oh my gosh, um, it's different. Like, it's just snow and it's different when it's froze. You see all white and it's just like in a magical place. Really, even right here so in Elsa's place. <laughs> yeah, even I'm so tired. Like I used to work night shifts. I really need to go to a park and take pictures because it's just so pretty. Or I would, oh, you know, just go change and go out and take pictures because that's how pretty it is. And then also, um, it's free. You know, you can sled in the park. So yeah. I, yeah, yes, that's, that's a very really good point. There's a lot of activities that you can do, even as a family, um, that are free, which are really fun and very different and exciting. Ruby, yes. I think we've got some of your pictures from the winter um, that you shared with us. Um, uh, do you want to yeah. tell us a little bit about <laughs> where you were here? What is that? Tell, tell us where, what these pictures are about. Where were oh, you? Yeah. yeah, so this is in um, the, uh, the first one on the right is in the only building here in North Dakota, that's the capital. Mm -hmm. So that's my favorite place. I jog during summer and go around during winter, take pictures because it's just so pretty there. And on the right side, uh, where is this? <laughs> I don't <laughs> don't remember. Yeah, it's just in our Bismarck because we just go around when it's like winter and it's froze. I just mm -hmm. go around and take pictures when it's uh, like so pretty. And then I think I believe after that I I went sledding, even oh. I'm alone. Yeah, I go sledding alone. Oh, fun. <laughs> yes. I always if it's winter, I always have my sled in my car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anytime I would you know feel like oh it's so pretty there, then I would you know uh, sled with the kids. There are other kids, and mm -hmm. um you also need to bring your ice skating. Uh -huh. I'm learning, so I bought an ice skating. Can you skate? I'm learning. Oh. <laughs> so it's also Good free. You. <laughs> you just have your ice skates and it's free uh, near JC Park. So and, and fantastic for kids. Yes. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I think we have some more of your pictures. I think there were Ruby's pictures. Um, yep. or just other, um, other, other pictures of um, you in the in the summer and the 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 fall. Um, where are these the colors? Yeah, beautiful. It is. So uh, the first picture is in the capital. See, that's mm -hmm. the summer. Mm -hmm. That one is winter. This one is summer. So it's all green. <laughs> Oh, and then the middle picture, yeah, these are in downtown, and this is just here, like five minutes drive, three minutes drive. It's all here in the city. I, I love that one with your with your arms up. You like this is me living my American dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is pretty. This is fall. Uh -huh. So oh, you can beautiful. go there um, if win uh, during winter. That mm -hmm. uh, Indian Ship Village, they are closed, but that is fall, and then you can see like. The changing of colors, the you know, the trees, foliage, it's so pretty. Beautiful, really beautiful. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about the your trips in America, because um I know that you have both been in America for a while now, and I think we also have some pictures, Ruby, of your your trips. Um tell us a little bit about <laughs> your, your trips. <laughs> yeah, um, um this is my way of unwinding. I like to yeah. travel. Uh -huh. So the first time, 2016, I went to New York. And then two years after, I went back to New York. Uh -huh. So I like going back to New York and, you know, be with friends. Or the second time, I brought my my daughter with me. Uh -huh. So we just had a good time there. Okay. And, yeah. And then Minnesota, Chicago, we went on a road trip. So, like, five days road trip. We passed by every city we go. And recently, yeah, I didn't put uh, the Yellowstone but it was so pretty yeah this is in arizona we went to utah las vegas and um where else colorado california they are all so pretty so here you can get by plane or road trip so it's up to you it's also nice to do to, to do road trips road trips yeah, yeah if you're okay with that and that's the nice thing about north dakota it's kind of in the middle of the country so you've got access to both size and, and it's not that far to travel. Carla, what is your favorite place that you've traveled to outside of North Dakota? I believe, um, well, I've only been to South Dakota and um, Minnesota, and then we went to Alberta, Canada. So I think we keep on going back to Minnesota. So, because uh, there's just a lot of things to do there um, in the Mall of America and um the nickelodeon place there so kids love it there the last time we were there there was a huge line like a long list probably because of the covid um pe the pandemic that started so that's why um they are they are limiting people to come in and you have to be in a line but yeah there's there's just so much to do in in minneapolis but the thing is it's like traffic and if you're not that smart in driving, don't even dare to drive because there are a lot of aggressive, aggressive drivers um, in in Minnesota compared to here. People are really laid back. <laughs> so it's fun to go there, but it's also nice to come back home. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's why we keep coming back home. It's like five days. Oh, OK, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Come back to the peace and quiet. Yes. No, not so much congestion. <laughs> um, we've spoken a little bit about. Um, oh, before we move on to the transportation, I wanted to share some fun facts. Um, we've got a slide and I'm just curious to see if everybody watching. We've got a lot of people watching all over the world. If anybody knows the answers to these questions. So if you know the answer to these questions, put mm -hmm. it into the chat. Does anybody know the Native American meaning of the what the word Dakota is? Anybody know what that means? And um, we've also got the North Dakota nickname is the Something Garden State. And the international Something Garden is a symbol of lasting friendship <laughs> between the United States and Canada. Does anybody know what North Dakota's nickname is? Um, and if you do, put it in the chat. Um, and then the world's largest something was eaten in Rutland, North Dakota in 1982. Ah, Necker's got, it's the Peace Garden State. Well done, mm -hmm. Necker. Yep. That, that is uh, um, well done. Um, mm -hmm. oh, Janessa's got it too. Janessa's got the Peace Garden mm -hmm. State. Does anybody know what the name Dakota means? The name, 
So see if anybody can come up with that one. And does anybody know what's the largest something? <laughs> oh, Tess has got it. Well done, Tess. It's a friend. Um, North, the, the word North Dakota means friend. Um, she's got peace and peace. Good, good job. Um, Henny's got friends. Well done. Friends. Nick has got friends. Janet's got friend. Anybody know what's the largest thing that was eaten in Rutland, North Dakota in 1982? I know everybody's Googling on their phones right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one, North Dakota holds the Guinness World Record for the most snow what made simultaneously in one place. Anybody know the answer to those two questions? Carla and, and Ruby, do you know the answer to those two for the last two questions there? I actually have no idea that no. North Dakota holds the Guinness World ah. Record for this. <laughs> well, this is something I'm learning now. You're learning. Mm -hmm. See, Lai and Anna have got it. It's a hamburger. Oh. The largest hamburger was eaten in Rutland in North Dakota in 1982. And Lai's got it. Snow Angel. <laughs> oh, oh wow. Wow. Florida holds the Guinness World Record for the most snow angels made simultaneously in one place. No wonder. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Wow, that was fun. Um, okay, so North Dakota's transportation. So, Ruby, you mentioned it's important to have a good car, right? Um, is there public transportation? Is there Uber? Is there Lyft? Are there trains? Are there buses? How did, and um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, okay. 2016, when we first arrived, um, there is no Uber, no Lyft. So basically only like Metro. Uh, yeah, I think that's the Metro taxi. What? And they I will really what? give you a headache. <laughs> at 4 a.m., I'm already awake. Mm -hmm. And still, I will be late at 7. Oh, and my then, God. <laughs> yes, at 7, they're like, um, well, if you want to cancel, you just cancel. I'm like, well, I waited since 4 a.m. No, I will wait. So <laughs> after that incident, I took a car, even not the, the one that I really want. I mean, with the color. So because I'm still waiting that time for my car. So I just took whatever is available car. <laughs> yep. And um, now they have the Uber. They have mm -hmm. Lyft. So that's very good. And they also have a public transport. Uh, they call that Bisman Transit. But mm -hmm. um, I think there's a certain schedule. And we tried that also. And, yeah, there's so much weird people there. We tried that <laughs> once only. <laughs> okay, so rather stick to Uber, Lyft, and your own car. Own car, yeah, that is uh, most preferred, your own car. Um, a really good uh, all-wheel drive. Okay. And, well, of course, heated, um, what do you call that, auto starter. Is a plus. Oh, yes, that is a must. Yes. <laughs> so that, you know, 15 minutes or 30 minutes before, for example, you work night shift, so you need to auto start your car so that when you arrive in your car, it's warm, it's comfy, and yeah, you will not uh, feel cold. Okay. So, auto starter, heated seat, all wheel drive or four wheel drive. Um, yeah, and you need to have, uh, what do you call that? Spray. Uh -huh. for, like, the uh, for, for the snow to melt yes oh, um, yeah. to spray on your windshield the icer the uh, icer yes the <laughs> icer. oh my gosh <laughs> the icer and some scraper mm -hmm. so those are the must have also you need to have and uh, a shovel shovel Oh. oh, so that so those are really great pointers and tips because you might not know that because you you know people living in in North Dakota they've grown up with that so they might know those things but those are great tips for for nurses that are arriving that might not have experienced the snow before and that's where I think it's just so interesting of you know you might not have lived in that kind of climate before but you learn to adapt and um, everybody yes. adapts so and there are lots of tools available to help you adapt so that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Carla, did you drive before you came to live in North Dakota or did you have to learn to drive when you came here? So when I moved here, I already knew how to drive. I wasn't that expert, but I, I was still in that novice beginner type. But I was used to driving uh, 
a stick shift car or a, a manual manual transmission car. That's what I was learning to drive back in the Philippines. And then when I moved here, I already when I moved here in North Dakota, I already had a Tennessee license because that's where I first arrived. So when I moved here, I just had to endorse that um, license card so that I can get the North Dakota um, driver's license. So that was easy. But when my husband did, um, he had to do the, the actual driving test and they have a parallel driving here. And I said, oh, thank God, I am not a, an expert in parallel driving. I said, thank God I already, I just had to, you know, um, surrender my Tennessee driver's license and then get a North Dakota one. I said, oh my, I would have failed. Because <laughs> I wasn't that good with parallel. I'm not sure if that is the same for all the DMVs in the other places. But in this mark, there is a parallel driving involved when you do the actual driving test. Um, and um, one other thing is um, when I came here, I also had the chance to do Uber and Lyft. Mm -hmm. um, that was already available because when, when I was pregnant, um, I didn't really like to drive. I was too lazy to drive. I just wanted to get picked up and then dropped off. So that was uh, plenty of options. And then I know that there are buses here as well. I see people taking them. There are routes that buses go to. So that's also available. But a huge necessity is to have really your own vehicle, especially during the winter winter time, because, you know, you can never predict the weather if you need to go from this place to this place. So that's why um, it's highly recommendable. And even if um, your car, it, let's say that you only have like a sedan type of car. So most of the sedan type of car are two wheel drive or front wheel drive. You can have the option to change into a winter tire, which I did when I had uh, a RAV4 um, back in 2017. I had to change to all winter tires and then I had it changed again once winter was over. So that's another option um, that um, they can also choose if if they want to, uh, to have a change to an all winter tire if they want to. I still have my winter tires. So if anyone would like to purchase it, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any. Yes, I know. <laughs> we have lots of international nurses coming to to North Dakota, so, <laughs> um, but I, but I think, um, you know, it's not just in North Dakota where most, pe most people drive a car. There are very few cities, um, in the United States that have very good, like, you know, like in New York city, maybe, or San Francisco, but most places in the United States, you, you know, most people will, will drive a car. And one, yeah, mm -hmm. just in addition to that, um, what's so nice about here? You have a huge parking space and oh. free and free. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, free even um, in the street, um, along the street. Uh, it's free because when we when we were in um, Minnesota, we had to pay for it, even if it was just 30 minutes here. It's free access to anyone, mm -hmm. anytime, anywhere. <laughs> oh, that's a big very, very rare with the uh, parallel parking. <laughs> only in downtown <laughs> yes <laughs> well those are good things to know thank you mm -hmm. okay we've got so many questions and i'm just watching the clock we've got like 12 minutes left to go so <laughs> we're going to try and get through as many questions as we can so beauty term mm -hmm. is asking about religion and i see we have a few questions about that and um, beauty term is saying we are muslim can we practice our faith and prayer carla Oh, yes, um, definitely. They they definitely can. Um, here in Bismarck, there is a masjid or a, what we call a mosque. So it's not like the typical ones that we are used to, like um, in Middle East. Um, we, it's commonly like looks like a house, but um, it does its job. It is um, a prayer of worship. So there you go. Uh, we have it here in Bismarck. I know Williston has one too. Um, there's also, I think, a couple of mosques in Fargo because Fargo is more uh, multicultural compared to here in Bismarck. But I know Williston and Minot have their own as well. And I think Devil's Lake has it too. Um, I'm not sure about the other cities because I haven't been there yet, but you can definitely practice your religion openly here, um, even at work, because um, my husband also does that at work, um, because it's against the law if um, they would stop you from, you know, if you have to do your prayer. So um, they would have to accommodate that. That's one of the um, good things about it. 
Okay, so I know Janet had a question about um, uh, Muslims in Fargo. So there we go, Janet. I'm glad that we could answer your question. And um, Ruby, can you tell us a little bit about the community? Are there other international people? I know that you both said that Fargo is maybe more international um, than what Bismarck is. But are, I mean, you know, do you have a community? Um, how did you find that when you arrived here? Um. Okay, when we first arrived here, um, we are the first international nurses in that has uh, in that hospital. So, um, we, yeah, but uh, there are nurses that are you know Filipinos who married uh, an American. So the the HR, how they call that, like you know, let us meet, gather, and in that way we find a community. And I try I tried also to search online. There is also like a Filipino. American community here if you want to join yeah and um before there's not much but eventually yeah you will see mm. Chinese some Koreans some Africans so it's getting um slowly diverse <laughs> but not so much compared to New York and other big cities but it's improving mm -hmm. you know compared to 2016 yeah we are seeing more uh, more people from different countries. Yeah. And and you're going to see a lot more because we are recruiting a lot of nurses for North Dakota um, and South Dakota and Minnesota and the and that whole area. Um, and there's going to be hundreds of people coming through. So I think that the community is going to be growing and changing and evolving mm -hmm. as well, which is going to be, I think, a lot of fun. Oh, that that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. We should have a Filipino restaurant here, huh? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, Lee is saying, I hope to see Fargo soon. Um, and uh, Leilani said, I just got an offer from Sanford in Fargo. Congrats, Leilani. That is fabulous. We're very excited for you. Um, okay. So let's see. We want to talk a little bit about um, – the uh, housing. I see we have a question here from Jansen who's asking about the rent and the housing in Bismarck. Can you talk a little bit about that, Carla? So um, there are apartments here that are already available. Um, it's, it's, it's already fully furnished. That's between, if it's like a one bedroom, it's between about 500 to 700, just kind of depends. Um, if you want to have a washer and dryer in the unit instead of a communal one, like you have to go downstairs and with a coin, um, use with a coin. So Public. with me, when I moved here, I prefer to have my own washer and dryer just to relieve myself of the headache. And um I don't want to, you're already tired from working a 12 hour shift alone. And then you have to drag your laundry downstairs and then drop points there. So I said, so when I got that apartment, I was also very lucky because it was a new building and I was the first tenant there. So all, all the appliances were st still had plastics. So, and a two bedroom, one bath apartment costs around 800, between 800 to 900. So it was fairly, uh, it was very affordable. Um, it, of course, with um, a nurse's salary, that is, um, you still have a lot to take home, even if you take out, you know, the expenses for apartment or or housing. And then if you need like a three bedroom or a four bedroom, then I think you will have to spend between 1100 to 1300 or even more um, if you want to have like your own backyard. Um, I'm living in a duplex um, house. And that cost that costs us um, about eleven hundred. So we're already very lucky because we have a three a three bedroom, one and a half bath um, house that we're living in, mm -hmm. and it's only eleven hundred. So compared to, and I have a friend in New Jersey. She's only living in a one bedroom apartment, and it costs her seventeen hundred. <laughs> so <laughs> huge difference. I live in, in San Diego, California. I don't even want to tell you what it will cost. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> um, Ruby, anything to add about the housing or the accommodation? Yeah, so with the housing, you can have uh, like a lease for, for, for six months mm -hmm. or to one year. So what I observe, if you like um, lease uh, like six months, it's, kind of expensive compared to when you um 
what's this uh rent for about a year so they kind of have a like a discount for that mm -hmm. yes yeah, so roughly 800 to to a thousand so um what i suggest also of course you need to check the kind of neighborhood because mm -hmm. as a nurse yes. you will be working uh different shifts so make sure that you check uh the neighborhood that it's safe for you when you go out at night or you go home at night so that's um a one, number one factor and then of course um having laundry it's also um very helpful but it will also add on the rent so if you want um you know if you're single then you can have uh, somebody who also is single then you can rent a room or you can rent an apartment and have a split with everything that's how i do when i first came here so i i have a friend she's single so we just have everything and it save a lot but make sure also that you two are you know getting, getting uh, yes <laughs> right wisely yeah to, to one thing i wanted to add tanya is mm -hmm. um if they are going to uh, get an apartment make sure that it has like a, a garage yes. because um it it really saves time for you especially during the winter you have to park your car inside the garage so that in the morning or the next day when you need to go to work or somewhere else your car won't be um under you know under snow or ice and you'll have to all to do all that work in 30 minutes you have to scrape the snow um and get the snow out of your car so if it's inside the garage so at least you know your car is kept clean and then uh, you won't have to do all that work about snow stuff so that's that's one thing yeah instead of an off street parking because i know yeah. that there are some areas yeah it's cheap and you don't have a garage it's just an off street parking yeah but your car is you know not safe especially during the night because there are um sometimes there are places or neighborhoods that um robbery with um theft and robbery is kind of rampant so mm -hmm. just um be be very careful um, and get an apartment that has a garage yeah instead yeah, so having a garage, that's a great tip. So thank you for raising that. I think that's really good advice. Um, and, you know, just to point out that North Dakota is the 18th safest state, safest state in, in the United States. So even though, as Carl and Ruby said, you know, sometimes they can, you know, and, and that's like in any city in the world. You yes. have some areas that are better areas than others. So it's just to educate yourself about that because every place in, in, the, in the world yes. has got that. Um, Chinyere is asking, how long will it take to process a visa for an NCLEX passer? Chinyere, um, if you have passed your NCLEX, please apply to our website, kineticsusa.com um, forward slash application. We'd be happy to help you. Um, and it's taking about a year. So the way that we do our recruitment is that we will um, make sure that the, the um, hospitals will pay pr premium processing. Um, and we'll file even without the IELTS. Of course, you need the IELTS by the time you get to the um, uh, to the consulate. Um, but that's where it's, it's um, I would say, just under a year. But that is a guideline because we are in the pandemic still. So just to be aware of that. Um, Len Len is saying, hi, I'm in Manitoba. I'm interested to work in North Dakota. I've already passed the NCLEX and waiting for my IELTS score. What will be the application process? Again, Len Len, please apply to the Kinetics USA website and our team will be online to help you. Um, and we have fan fabulous opportunities that I'm sure you'll be very excited about. Um, Elvis is asking about NICU in North Dakota and South Dakota. Yes, we'd be happy to help you, Elvis. Um, Henny is saying, I will be going to Fargo soon with Kinetics, of course. Yay, Henny, we can't wait for you to, to get here um okay nina is saying she's gonna go as well and um, we also have a question about medical technologists yes we can help you for, um as a medical technologist and um, abigail is saying do you recruit outside of the united states we only recruit outside of the united states and <laughs> um, so um we've answered the questions about housing whoa so many questions i'm so sorry everybody we almost <laughs> have time and i want to try and pick Ruby and Carla's brains and get as many questions um, as we can for you. Um, Cindy's asking, we work in a 600 bed capacity for two years. Do you have an NCLEX scholarship program? So this is important, Cindy. I'm glad you asked that question. We do. Please apply to our website and see if you're eligible for the scholarship. This is our gift to nurses. 
This is our gift to nurses. We are paying for you to do an NCLEX scholarship um, and um, to help nurses to get to the United States. Um, Janessa is saying, hi, I will see you in May. Janessa is arriving in North Dakota soon. So oh. um, that will be real fun. Okay, so last question I wanted to talk about to ask Carla and Ruby before we finish up is about kids. So um, it's well, well, it's 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 um it's well stated that North Dakota is the third best state in the country to raise a family. Can you talk about what it's like as a parent? Uh, oh, there we've got some reasons to move to North Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, six rates six, six friendly, one of the most tax friendly, one of the best states to get an education. So a high school graduation rate ranked seventh in the nation, low crime rate. Uh, ranked 18th safest state in the U.S. Clean environment. I think Ruby, you'd mentioned that. Um, ranked fifth in air quality and third in, in in water quality. And there we have it. The ranked the third best state to raise a family. Bismarck and Fargo are among America's top 10 places to raise a family. Let's talk a little bit about those nurses that are going to be coming for a fam with a family. What advice do you give to parents about schooling? Um, and can you sh what can you share about the school system in Bismarck? Ruby, let's start with you. <coughs> um, okay. I don't have like little kids. My kid arrived here. She was already on, um, oh, what was that? Um, eighth grade or something. But anyways, what I learned here, first, before coming here, for those having kids, try to research which school is good. And then from that school, because they are like zoning here. So it depends from where you live, what's your zip code. That's the school. Um, there are certain schools that are, you know, um, that you can enroll your kids. And then with free bus also, there is also a certain distance that you can, um, I, I, I forgot what's the certain miles that you need to be far from school for you to be able to to get a free bus bus ride so yeah that's the first thing like check for a good school and then um uh choose the apartment based on the uh like how do you call that zip code because there's zoning here okay great advice anything to add to that carla about the school system and advice for parents coming so I think one of um, the main concern of parents here is the bullying. <laughs> so I guess one tip that I can give them, because when we moved here, my daughter was in fifth grade. So she was in elementary and had to transition to middle school. Um, so middle school here is between sixth to eighth grade. Um, and then you move to high school from ninth to 12th grade. So just an FYI. So she was uh, in her last year of elementary. So, um, and like what Ate Ruby said, uh, it's per, per area here or district. That's how they assign the public schools to you. So everything is for free. Um, otherwise, from those additional that you have, if your child is like an art class, they have some stuff that they would want you um to pick up for your child for uh, art supplies aside from that everything is um for free and then the busing um is also free so um the main concern is about bullying so if your child um i believe just give them the heads up or advise them that if someone is kind of picking on them even if it only starts as a joke to tell um the teacher or someone who's an authority so that bullying kid or that other child does not continue doing that but my daughter um because she's very good she uh was able to adapt to the other kids very easily so she had she had no issues at all with someone bullying her but stereotyping is very much rampant as well they were asking her are you from china because it's like they only know that when you're from Asia, it's like China is the only country that they know about. Forgive the kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, that's that's actually one one of the um, main points that she told me about. They thought that she was Chinese. They mm -hmm. asked her if she was eating dogs or stuff like that. So I told her just, you know, answer them and um, give them the knowledge that China is not only the main country in Asia and there are a lot more countries there and um, just educate them as well because the kids here 
what would they know about? Mm -hmm. So yeah, just to address that um, bullying issue right away before it even gets worse. But thank thank God that my my daughter never had to um, suffer from suffer from that. So that's that's one of thing. And um, like what Ate Ruby said, um, just research on the area where you want to live and the school. If you see like if the school has very bad reviews um, from other parents, then just look for another area where there's like a, a good public school or either an elementary, middle or high school. So that's how that's how the school system here in, um, in North Dakota. And I think also all the parts of the U.S. It kind of depends on where you live, because if you move, your child also has to move schools with you. Yeah, that's that's what happens. And, and a lot of in, uh, international immigrants don't realize how the zoning works, that you have to live within that specific zone. So yes. that's a great tip is to be able to, you know, for, for parents to prepare. And that's where from the kinetic side, we have um, a lot of resources that we provide to our nurses when they arrive, because it's something that you just can't know because it's different in America to, I think, any other country in the world of how the zoning for schools actually work. Um, and, um, you know, so I, I think um, the fact that it is rated one of the, the best places to raise a family um, is something that is really very um, encouraging and very inspiring for any parents. So there are things to learn, but at the same time, really a great place to bring up a family. Yes, very true. Oh, and one more thing that I wanted to add, Tanya, is you can also, uh, you have the option to homeschool your child, which uh, I actually uh, have started doing for about two years now with um, with my high school daughter. So she's uh, just homeschooled. So all you need to do, uh, I think, is as a parent, you just need to provide the school district or uh, the school board with a, a diploma or a high school diploma and and that's it. And that's how I got approved um, to homeschool my daughter because I've been doing it for almost between two to three years now. That's also another option that um, that they can do in case wow, they. That's they great. Yeah, that's really interesting. And that's a new trend, not just in North Dakota. <laughs> yes, but that's a new trend in the U.S. and um, throughout the different states. So really interesting. OK. Well, we are we are over the hour, <laughs> Carla and Ruby. This was such a fun, interesting discussion. I personally learned a lot. So I hope that all the nurses that are watching all over the world has have learned about North Dakota and learned about what life is like there. Um, and really just so excited to hear all the, the positive things that um, you've shared with us and all the information, because I think it's going to be so helpful for all the nurses who are going to be coming to North Dakota soon. So thank you for your for your input. Thank you for your time. And um, just before we leave, just a, a sneak peek at the upcoming shows. Um, we have some shows coming up and um, we've got an IELTS show coming up next Friday. Um, so please watch out for that. I know we had a lot of questions about IELTS in the chat today. And in March, we are doing on the 4th, our state side is going to be New York. So we're going to be um, uh, speaking to nurses who are living in New York and finding out what life is like um, in New York. Um, then on the 11th, we have our immigration. So our uh, immigration question and answer with the legal ep experts. Save up your legal and immigration questions and ask that of the experts on the 11th. On the 15th, we have the Lafora talk show where we're going to be talking about what the first 30 days in the United States is like. On the 18th, we have a kinetics recruitment event. And um, so we've got some fun things coming up about, um, uh, you know, how to to get started coming to with your journey of coming to the United States. And then on the 25th, we have our showcase with Ashna, which is one of our kinetics employers in Louisiana. And um, I also just wanted to mention we have an article on our website. It's called um, uh, an article about all the different states. Um, and we uh, so you can download that. This is a free guidebook and gives you information about everything that you need to know about all the different states and including North Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, and last but not least is the Kinetics Initiatives. So just to share with you, we have our free IELTS scholarship which is a review course for all Kinetics USA nurses. This is our gift for you. This is something we implemented with the pandemic and we have got phenomenal, fantastic results on our IELTS courses. We also have a free review course for NCLEX scholarship. So apply to our website and see if you're eligible. And if you're not eligible for the scholarship, please don't panic. 
As soon as you've passed the NCLEX, come back to us and we'd be happy to help you. We also have our $1,000 referral fee for nurses with NCLEX. This was extended until February 28th. We have our podcast, Nursing in America, which we're in the top 10% of podcasts worldwide. We also have a direct hire program for nurse aides. I saw we had a few questions in the chat about nurse aides. We have a show coming up about that soon. And watch every Friday our show, Onwards and Upwards, Global for Global Nurses Coming to live in America. And we also have our allied needs. I know we had a question about medical technologists and we are currently have US employers hiring all the allied needs. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you again to Ruby and thank you to Carla for joining us today, for sharing your insights, your pointers, your tips, your encouragement. We are so, I think the you have really paid it forward today for other nurses, so thank you for doing that. Um, and we look forward to all of those nurses in the chat that are going to North Dakota, who are also gonna be living their American dream, just like Ruby and Carla. Thank you, everybody. See you next Friday, onwards and upwards. Bye, everyone. Bye.